Welcome everyone to the Generation Z Guys podcast by Lowstar UM India. This is a series of podcasts where we discuss all things Gen Z. Today is the fifth episode of the podcast, and today we'll be discussing how Gen Zs could shape the future. If you're new to the podcast, you like listening to this one, then you can go back and listen to the previous ones. And also, we'll be dropping a few more in the next few days, so you can stay tuned to listen to those ones. I'm Kulnath, and you'll be hearing my voice through the podcast. And with me, as always, I have Lowstar UM CEO Strat Guru Aditi Mishra. Hi, Aditi. Hi, Kulnath. Hi everyone who's tuned in today. Uh, so just before we get into you know some of the learnings, a quick introduction to how we actually got about uh, doing this study and and what did we actually do. So one of the interesting things uh, when we started looking at Gen Zs is uh, you know how they are different from the other groups, whether it's millennials or Gen Xs, and to find out the the real nuances, we approach this through the avenue of insiders. You know. Uh, the Gen Zs themselves actually partnered with us to find out more about their peers, how uh, they do things, how they engage with brands, what are their dreams, aspirations, how they are evolving actually. And since this study was conducted over the last two and a half years, uh, it, it has also given us an interesting uh, view in terms of what changed. How did they actually uh, address some of the challenges which emerged in their lives? Uh, The overall study is being done across multiple formats. So we did a huge uh, quantitative study, then we followed it up with a qualitative study, and then a depth understanding of their actual usage of various products and brands. And uh, today, one aspect of what we'll be talking about is actually what we learned from them. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for summarizing so nicely, Aditi. Thank you so much. And today's podcast, what we are calling today's podcast, is the shapers of the future because that's how we see the Gen Zs. They'll be the fu- they're the future generation. They'll be shaping the future. Uh, not necessarily. We have a time capsule with us that I can travel into time and tell you okay, how they'll, they're fa- shaping the future. But this is from all the learnings that we have observed from all these studies. And what we have summarized is that these are the four areas that we see that Gen Z is working towards in the future and really making certain. impacts in various ways and then how can we connect back to brands we'll talk about all of that uh, the first ex- aspect that we see and we've listened to the previous some of the podcasts that you will find something similar that this generation is very much finding the right balance or uh, our right path uh, while they have youthful exuberance and full of energy and uh, full of view of how the future should be and how do they want to shape the future but yet they have a uh, real pragmatism uh, their everything is rooted in reality and pragmatism so it's the right balance while on one side they have idealism and the other side is a, is a, what is holding to the roots is pragmatism something that we definitely see in let's say a category like auto and how uh, all talk about evs and environment and that's where uh, the future is heading towards and gen z is very much welcome that and they are actually like spearheading all this conversation but at the same time they understand the importance of while you're talking about evs and but how much is your carbon footprints and where is your electricity actually coming from what's the source so it, it, it's just not uh, just for the sake of ev ev but is the organization becoming more sustainable and all of this conversation are actually a lot of time are led by gen z here yeah. Yeah so I think uh, it emerges from two things possibly you know gen-, gen Z is is a stage of uh, change you you are sort of finding out about yourself you are finding out about how you want to live in this world you are uh, building your ideals you are maybe pulling down your ideals at the next step and and in this journey uh, the the thing that really differentiates the gen z from maybe the millennials or previous generations is uh, while they are uh, idealistic they they do you know dream of a better future they do dream a lot but but those dreams are very very strongly connected to reality and i think that's that's the big difference that we see so uh, when they look at any new thing or or even relook at old things the evaluation of of what is on the table the evaluation of how they want to engage with that how they want to 
लेवरेज दैट इन देर लाइफ इज अक्रॉस मल्टीपल डायमेंशंस वेरी वेरी इंफॉर्मेशन लेड लॉट मोर यू नो फोकस्ड ऑन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द नुआंसिस एंड अक्रॉस मल्टीपल पैरामीटर्स सो एवरीथिंग इज नॉट जस्ट वन वी ऑफ वॉट अ ब्रांड और अ मार्केट इज टेलिंग बट ऑल्सो वॉट पीपल लाइक मी आर सेंग वॉट हैपन्स वेन आई एक्चुअली यूज एंड ट्राई समथिंग सो द होल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ understanding and then making a choice balancing you know the asks and and some of this you know you would have seen probably in the, in the second episode of our podcast when we spoke about this interesting nuance of somebody who is otherwise fairly conventional uh, feeling quite okay with doing puja in the morning and partying hard at night and and that's the kind of balance let's say that they have in their personal lives there is there is no dissonance in terms of you know what is that one persona i need to have so yeah. so a very thought through choice and at the same time being comfortable because it's a thought through choice in terms of the balance uh, that they want to seek or want to establish um the second thing and in sort of emerge kula with uh, you know the point that you raised around ev mm. so while uh, there are these nuances in terms of you know they are trying to understand new technology is not necessarily better technology mm. unless yes. it's it's like proven so unless yeah. you have you really you know checked out all the details and uh, one of the interesting things that that you know we are doing at ipg for example is uh, looking at what is the carbon footprint of yeah. your media activity yeah. you yeah. know is it is it okay to do 10 out of home sites or or are your media partners really understanding what's the carbon footprint so mm-hmm. i think as as responsible citizens of the world yeah. while we are not gen z gen z but <laughs> but we are definitely you know uh, living the world uh, and and sort of crafting it for the future for the gen z and and generations beyond so it is it is important for marketers and brands to be conscious about some of these aspects as well yeah certainly certainly that's a very important aspect which is all about idealism balancing with pragmatism the another aspect that they are constantly seeking uh, the right balance is all about uh, finding the right value proposition for them uh the price and quality they are always balancing both the side together it's not just always about obviously they have lesser resources maybe so therefore they are obviously focused on price at all the time but at the same time they are also looking at the quality is it the right actual quality that you get in that price so they will always chase for that so that value proposition for the audience uh for the gen z is very much critical and brands should work towards that finding that sweet spot and that's that's where it will definitely make much more sense for the audience uh, gen z's to uh, like a brand to subscribe to a brand or uh, to be an advocate for the brand yeah so one uh, quote that will uh, listen to one that person is anurag he's from uh, shrinagar he, uh, he's about 18 year old he talks about while we always all know social media and all of that is really good uh, everywhere but how he struggles to find uh, to cope up with all of this information overload so how is digital media affecting your life uh, actually it's giving me too much information for me and right now i'm not able to handle it because um, every day and day people meet uh, people uh, give posts on instagram or on facebook so it is too much information to handle because uh, when you have a conventional media so you have a um, like restricted amount of information I get my news today, so there is there are like hundred articles, right? Not more than hundred articles. But on an online platform, I will get thousand or lakhs of articles in a day. So it's really un I'm unable to process it. So yeah, I'm struggling right now with digital platforms. so very very interesting quote you know typically yeah. uh, we think that uh, everybody is digital yeah. and and yeah. everybody wants to be digital yeah. uh, uh, so and and this sort of you know pulls back the story to say what is really digital mm. so yes digital is a form of access i yeah. will access information yeah. but i don't want to be inundated yeah. i want yeah. to be able to make choices and and i see the value of what is coming to me on another medium and and i will probably use a mix of both yeah. it's yeah. it's not just good enough for you to bombard me on digital yeah. and then expect that you know that's what i'm buying into yeah. so uh, so i think that that is an interesting nuance to keep as marketers at the back of our mind that mm. it is while the generation or or even people like us today are a lot more digital yeah. but uh, digital is a way of being digital is not equal to digital media alone yeah. so so that's the nuance i think that that we need to keep 
at the back of our I think, minds. I guess we also have need to find the right balance. Yeah, of yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so here, this person he talks about, so, and he evaluates everything so uh, rationally and uh, looks at, that's actually the next uh, area that uh, we see that uh, uh, Gen Z is evolving, that they are, uh, uh, they are very much critical thinkers and they will, uh, they evaluate everything very rationally. And that's how I, I personally also see that they uh, they will evaluate everything in the future very uh, rationally because they have so much access to information. They can, uh, while you're telling them something, they will see, they will hear that from one point of view. They will go back, they will do their own research because access to information, so much information is available. They'll do their due diligence and then they will evaluate basis their own rational thought process. So they... Uh, so therefore it is imperative for the brands and whoever is interacting with them to also keep that thing in mind that they're the next generation is definitely becoming more intelligent maybe uh, we always talk about customer being uh, smart or intelligent yes they are becoming more and more intelligent more informed more equipped to handle everything that's thrown at them so that, that that's how I, I see that uh, in the future critical thinking will be part of uh, the consumer journey or consumer decision making process. So I don't know, I think, uh, you know, mm. maybe critical thinking has always been there. Huh. It's it's just that what are the levers or what are the parameters, mm. um, you know, that, that are important yeah. at, at any point of time. And, and right. therefore you are evaluating your choices against that parameter. Yeah. So for example, if, if, you know, looking good is important to me for others, then mm. that's the parameter I'm going to evaluate yeah. any decision against uh, versus if it is about learning and growth, then there's a different parameter. Yeah. I will. Um, but I think what, what is uh, holding all Gen Z together vis-a-vis -vis any other generation in the past is that there is a very clear and a singular focus on self so it is it is not in a negative or a selfish way but i think there is clarity in terms of the fact that it is with me where things start so so therefore uh, you know uh, keeping self development as focus keeping mm -hmm. where do i want to go as a person as focus mm -hmm. and then uh, evaluating analyzing things with that lens mm -hmm. so all information that I get all things that I can do is is starting a lot with me mm -hmm. yes I take everybody's inputs I try to balance the other things that uh, are there but I'm okay questioning paradigms I am yeah. okay looking at newer ways of, of doing things and uh, using a combination of old ways new ways old tools new tools so there is uh, an evolution in yeah. that sense in yeah. terms of how they are looking at things and this is uh, highly compounded by access uh, improved through technology mm -hmm. and and the change which is happening in their lives you know whether it's in terms of the the information or data available yeah. where to, whether it's in uh, in terms of just uh, you know media choices available uh, you know we, we talk with traditionally about things like you know from 80 channels to 800 channels mm -hmm. 10 publications to 10,000 mm -hmm. and everything available at the push of a button everything mm -hmm. just accessible yeah. so what is it that I'm choosing to base my decisions on is all centered around um, you know that need to grow as a person mm -hmm. and in a uh, in a much more rational and balanced way yeah. uh, than before. Yeah, certainly. And you talk about need to grow as a person and that's what it, in fact uh, is happening and, and the whole pandemic time period actually gave a lot of a lot of Gen Z's that uh, much needed break also uh, for, for, for a few months maybe that they could evaluate, they could hone some skills and that's what uh, Ananya uh, from Delhi, she speaks about that how she utilizes various of the uh, time that she had uh, to become more grateful. No, a little more grateful. Grateful. Oh, yes, so, I see. Yeah. So what happens is, COVID has made me realize that I am probably one of the most privileged persons on earth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have the resources and the very many other things that, let's say, billions of people basically covet in today's world. Uh, they uh, want that. They need that. They want that for basic survival. I already have that. You know what my concerns are on a daily sort of basis yeah. my mom's are my concern the fact that someone ghosted me is a concern um, the fact that oh maybe I said the wrong thing on a conversation and the fact that maybe oh I have a project to submit these are my concerns 
they are not even concerns dude concerns yeah. are how am i supposed to feed my family for the next 3 weeks yeah how am i supposed to put a roof over my head how am i supposed to put a job how am i supposed to compensate for this do that transfer whatever and so on and so forth mm-hmm. so yeah what i have been what i have become is a little more grateful and honestly is a little more careful or maybe a little more concerned for the people who are not as privileged as i am so i kind of have started working towards understanding how i can make the best use of my privilege because so see i'm 18 i'm still studying i have a lot a lot uh, of ground to cover long way to go when it comes to finishing my academics and i will not be anything when it comes to being in a position to actually help those people who are not as privileged for a very long time i need to finish and start working when it comes to being able to help and being in a capacity so what i'm trying to do here is basically make a better person of myself so that when i am in that capacity i understand the importance of helping and of uh, supplementing and um, sort of uplifting for those people i be the support for them i want to be the support for them so yeah i basically became a little more grateful a little more concerned and a little more uh, let's see futuristic in terms of hey what can i do for you what can i do right now to make myself the person uh, who is capable of doing something for you the way maybe my parents did when they worked hard it's something like that so they are like it's it's a very powerful thought process that she go she has gone through the in during this time period where she uh, saw around her uh, that uh, how people are struggling that made her think so it, it's it's a evaluation of where she is and what are her concerns versus what are actual life concerns and i think that you spoke about that is it's a time of transition also their career their life stage is also evolving and they they are see able to grasp around uh, grasp across on things that how different challenges are in life so yeah it, it i think what what is interesting is that uh, there is a fair amount of self awareness there yes. is a there is a lot of uh, like i said it starts with peace so therefore mm. understanding yourself yeah, yeah. understanding what is happening around you what is your view about rest of the world and therefore how you want to evolve and and uh, a clear mapping in your mind of you know possible steps that you may need to take so yeah. so uh, a lot of thinking around some of these aspects uh, i think i think that's interesting um uh, and and also interesting is you know as they understand uh what is it that is really being sought by yourself so mm-hmm. you know what am i seeking how yeah. do i make it happen yeah. what are the steps that i want to take so that i think is an interesting thing and and this this generation uh, gen z has has i think gone a lot more deeper than perhaps generations before yeah yeah, yeah. and that has pushed them to uh, work towards on or work on themselves like you said and uh, therefore we see a lot or more focus on like uh, all of these uh, ad tech platform and yeah. then different different of these platform where they can pick up quick quick skills and add to their skill set and yeah. Uh, yeah. develop themselves groom themselves better and move into the future and uh, that's where i would move to the next point where it is all about uh, because they, why why do they do all of these thing why do they pick up all of these skills because they want to constantly evolve and do better and constantly push Uh, certain limits uh, to chase their dreams and uh, to chase a uh, certain ambitions that ha- they have along with the ambition they're willing to work towards it and mm. that therefore an action and ambition goes very hand in hand with them uh, with the gen z and that's what they are doing uh, like we have i think previously we've spoken about uh, spoken about uh, uh, we've heard from people who uh, participate in uh, going out to ngos and uh, put in work Uh, to help uh, people around them to to help uh, kids and uh, uh, teach them uh, on something or educate them and uh, take the time out uh, to help the society become better so that's what that's what they this generation is all about pushing the limit so similarly going into the future this this trend uh, or, or this this urge to push uh, limits and uh, uh, get the best things out of things around you will not go away so the brands should, should also be uh, helping them to get the best thing our uh, best product out there and also let the gen z's experience the brand in that way so i think two things uh, uh, one is uh, this this whole sense of comfort with change you know uh, i'm doing something now this is how it may evolve i will experiment i will try and yeah. i myself will also keep evolving yeah. so uh, so there is no static one way of this is how i want to go and this is therefore how life will happen but comfort with 
fact that things will change i am okay with changing things and and there is no problem it it is it is not an issue that you know i am not thinking 10 years down and i'm sure about where i want to be so uh, that is is something which then starts reflecting in how they make uh, their brand choices uh, so you know legacy brands and brands that i've always been using yeah. are not necessarily the brands that i also want to use tomorrow they may be yeah. i may be okay i but but i may evaluate and decide that i want to do something different and there's no problem with it it's yeah. it's fine so uh, this this whole comfort of experiencing width of experiences width of brands width of things that i want to see and do uh, versus committing myself to an in-depth siloed approach day one that mm-hmm. is a big difference yeah and uh, building from what you were earlier talking about because there is action with ambition they they are looking at a certain kind of future and and brands which therefore are meaningful for them is is also uh, reflected in in this sense of purpose that brands need to talk about you know mm-hmm. what is the brand giving me or or yeah. uh, how is the brand connecting with me beyond just the product or the service yeah. what is it standing for yeah. is it doing the right things yeah. I, is it standing for the right things yeah. so while they do understand and i think we had a quote from someone saying that you know i understand every ba- brand can't be doing purpose campaigns yeah. right? i get uh-huh. that but at heart are they at least taking steps to be more yeah, meaningful yeah so that is a question which they are now progressively asking and and that's why we see that you know when legacy brands need to continue to be meaningful for this generation mm-hmm. even if it's a brand that i've been using for the last 5 8 years i still need to do things which continue to strengthen my meaning yeah 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 constantly it's, you have to engage yes, with them so yeah, yeah. Th- just like they are evolving and they are asking questions or or they are checking the brands also have to continue to be meaningful by you know i would say recasting how they are seen mm. by by checking am i being meaningful am i sharing my purpose in a larger way with this audience yeah yeah, yeah. you have to uh, brands have to do that certainly because they are uh, very clear mm. like you said right you have to be purposeful they are very clear in fairly clear in their thinking and also they are uh, very purpose driven they are very rationalized thinking so that so that uh, obviously the brand should definitely do the other aspect is that uh, we'll listen to uh, riya now where she talks about that uh, whole startup and then how she wants to work on startup and that that's what i think the other thing their whole entrepreneurial spirit that pushes them to uh, like go to the next step chase their own ambition or tell their own story maybe so that that's something that we'll hear from riya she's from dehradun and she speaks about that So that's that's it. So so I think you spoke about this in one of your previous episodes, and we are referring back to our previous episodes. Yeah, that they are willing to take that chance. Yeah, they have lesser probably fear of failure. Yeah. So therefore, they they are willing to take that chance, and then they are okay that they will work for a startup for four five years. They'll try something on their own. They want to achieve success. If not, they are not disheartened by that. They will probably pick up learnings from that and move on to the next thing. So that's. And you know, maybe something to think about is that's what perhaps COVID did. You mm. know, mm-hmm. it it told you that there was uh, no guaranteed things mm-hmm. in yeah. life. You know, yeah. Y- yeah. you certainly could there could be a situation where you had to reevaluate everything. Yeah. There yeah. there would be you know sure shot things which could fail. Yeah. And yeah. I think that has also made them because of the period of the study that uh, we have done. It has made them more okay with not necessarily the. you know the view of success that they had seen earlier yeah. so it's okay to fail and learn and to fail and learn and it's okay as a cycle it's not yeah. it's not a concern in that sense yeah certainly certainly so uh, so uh, now we'll move over to the last point and uh, this is all about uh, how they are uh, the future looks very full of technology and all about uh, the world which moves towards tech but and uh, 
tech certainly gives a lot of convenience and comfort but there is the other side of technology also tech influences and add a lot more to their life but also it it adds into certain uh, maybe uh, it makes you a little bit lazy at times <laughs> and it 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 it, uh, it overwhelms you with a lot of information as what we have heard from anurag previously so that's the other side so the the world that will be in the future while they and and they're becoming more and more conscious about that aspect so mm. in the future when they'll evaluate a different aspect then they will also be addressing that aspect that uh, how they need to balance and juggle between mm. things uh that will be one challenge for the gen zs and brands uh, which can actually help them navigate those situation will uh, be much more closer to them closer to the gen zs i think so that's what uh, uh i felt uh, after listening to all of these uh, people and uh, understanding this yeah it's it's true so uh, because of this whole aspect of self awareness and you know being informed and and reading more and talking about what's happening in their lives with peers so uh, uh, things are a lot more open you know yeah. they are they're not under wraps there because i have information available i can see what people are saying doing engaging so there there is a uh, comfort in being straight or or being uh, you know a lot more open than earlier yeah. and uh, that has also led them to understand that you know there is this blurring which is happening in terms of what is really essential on digital or what do i really need to do mm-hmm. versus where am i slipping because i'm getting caught mm-hmm. in, in that magic so yeah, yeah. so uh, i think we've we've seen some different examples is there's somebody who's looking at uh, relying on digital to drive their passions mm-hmm. but at the same time understanding and looking at the real world for you know work or or things that they may want to do yeah. uh, also this balancing of how uh, you know engagements and social and staying connected all the time with my friends Yeah, yeah. is is important and and that's what's happening digitally but at the same time i love to spend time with my family also and and in a way perhaps it's it's like more so uh, earlier i would do this or that mm-hmm. now i'm doing this and that so mm-hmm. i'm at home i'm talking to my family and i'm also at the same time probably using my phone yeah. and at that fragmented attention is is something that you know you step back and realize oh maybe this is not the best way and i need to detox myself yeah, and that's yeah, that's yeah. an interesting word some of them use yeah, yeah, yeah. saying that you know there are times when i have to keep it away yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. i have to detox and i have to get yeah. out of this so um, from brands which are uh, sort of specially talking only to this audience it's it's important to understand how we are building that balance yeah, yeah. am i enabling this experience am i uh, helping them make this choice uh is there a way that i can uh, you know limit and and even tech platforms you know like for example microsoft uh, talks about the fact that you know what's been your screen time mm-hmm. do you need to cut it down mm-hmm. so depending on you know what kind of parameters you set yourself these are things which mm-hmm. are available yeah these are things which are possible uh yes the choice remains with the gen z you know how yeah. much they want to do and yeah. and what they want to choose yeah yeah, yeah. when we we are discussing right now i was just going back to this uh, documentary like social dilemma yeah. right? i was going back to that whole documentary and uh, i'm not sure if that documentary was targeted to gen z's but mm. yeah it was more from maybe from outside we could learn a lot from them but even the gen z's are having similar sort of conversation maybe not in that depth as of now with so much data and all that they they are realizing that fact and they are also working towards how to get the right balance again here definitely tech they can't let go of tech tech is providing a lot of convenience lot of knowledge etc and making life easy and comfortable but yet how to balance the over excess use of tech so that's the thing uh, so shreya she is from jaipur she is only 15 year old and uh, she uh, has this point of view on uh, how tech probably is making her lazy okay so technology is made her very really lazy i have uh, alexa at home i just shout every day alexa 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 and she will do everything for me she will switch on the light she will set the alarm she will call uh, somebody and uh, so i think it is we are becoming very lazy now and even do i do exercise yes but usually when i'm in the night when i'm lying down on the bed i just shout alexa alexa so 
I think this is, we are becoming very lazy and uh, uh, because of technology, but also we are becoming very much aware and also fake uh, propaganda are being spread due to technology only in Twitter, on Facebook or whatever social media. So you will see there are fake propaganda being spread. So that is also because of technology. So there is a zone and day. All right. So there she is fairly self-aware that uh, yeah on one side she has all of this knowledge and information where some of the fake propaganda she is getting and on the other side technology is making her lazy so that's why she's not very happy with it uh, yeah so that's the that's the thing that's so that's what uh, this young person who's talking about technology from a very different perspective yeah so uh, see i think uh, that that is at the heart of really what gen z is all about mm-hmm. you know this this interesting quote uh, by shreya that you know i understand i i know how i'm using it i know maybe i'm not doing the perfect thing mm-hmm. but that's okay as long as i know it mm-hmm. and i'm aware that not everything is to be believed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, so they do they do get that you yeah. know yeah. it's it's not that uh, they they don't understand but i think at the same time it doesn't take away the the responsibility that media needs to have uh, that partners like us need to have yeah. in terms of how we are addressing the gen z yeah. how we are using data yeah. uh, what should be the rules social dilemma was let's say 2 years back yeah. and then you know 3 uh, years back perhaps and uh, things have evolved yeah. things have yeah. changed i mean you see what's happening to twitter now yeah. and yeah. and yeah. you know frankly my twitter feed has suddenly changed i'm like getting all kinds of random things which i would have yeah. never got earlier yeah. and and i'm just like trying to figure out should i stop it should i just let it be and yeah. see how things change yeah. and and maybe it's a part of the role that you know not not just as a consumer but but as a professional maybe i should just keep checking what's happening there yeah, yeah. but and and that's just one platform yeah. and and there are same kind of things which which may be happening on whatsapp i mean the yeah. news today of whatsapp uh, allowing you to now just quickly directly address a business mm-hmm. new new things mm-hmm. let's see let's see how some of these offerings pan out yeah uh, but what's important i think is to Uh, be very careful in terms of how responsibly the platforms are behaving mm-hmm. and uh, what is the way th- all this engagement and then this data that is getting collected how is that used a lot of impact will come in from the new data policy is just open up for mm-hmm. feedback right now uh, so let's see uh, how that evolves but definitely definitely we need to keep our eyes very very closely on that yeah. because uh, not just it will impact the gen z of today it will also impact the media of tomorrow yeah, so yeah. both for both uh, purposes it's going to be absolutely critical yeah so that's it so these are the four quick points that we wanted to just bring to you uh, for your uh, uh, knowledge uh, that how gen z is might just impact the future in certain ways uh, so if you like listening to this and want to listen more of such podcasts uh, subscribe to generation z guys uh, so thanks for listening bye bye stay tuned guys and you'll hear more from us next time yeah. thank you thanks bye